You've probably heard me talking about this self-sufficient living skills bundle that's been going on, and I have been spending the last week flipping through so many of the incredible resources within this bundle. Now, I will say there's a lot. There's over 118 different ebooks and courses and lessons sharing incredible wisdom and knowledge with you, so you can live off the land and you don't have to rely on this corrupt and broken system for everything for your family. Anyways, I wanted to share some of my favorite things. One, first off, is off-grid homeopathy. This course is loaded with so much incredible knowledge, talking about homeopathy for first aid, for colds and flu, how to make your own homeopathic remedies. Like, as an herbalist who loves to teach that stuff, that's pretty exciting to hear it in the homeopathy realm. There's also some incredible fermentation guides, so many other amazing herbal recipes and food recipes and how to make your own sourdough bread, how to do your own organic gardening and canning of all of your foods. Really, there is so much. And yes, I know, I know. I've talked about it a ton, but this entire bundle is only $50 right now until Sunday, March 24th. I'm sharing my herbal first aid skills, which is a course that's $47 on its own. I'm sharing recipes that I used when I got my products into REI for herbal first aid kits and so much more. Y'all have to check it out. I'm serious. Like you can absolutely change your life with this bundle. So there is a link in the show notes for you and I hope you check it out. I hope you take advantage. Don't worry. You don't have to go through everything right away. You can access everything for up to a year. Once you're in the course or have the download, it's yours for life. It is a steal of a deal. Okay, self-sufficient living skills bundle in the links for you. Hello and welcome to The Herbalist Path, a podcast where you'll discover how to make your own herbal remedies at home so that you can take better care of yourself, better care of your family, and better care of our planet. I'm Mel. I'm a clinical herbalist, environmental educator, and mountain living mama with this crazy passion for teaching more mamas and their little loves how to use plants as medicine in a safe, effective, and tasty way so that there can be an herbalist in every home again. It's an absolute honor to have you on the journey down the herbalist path with me so that together, We can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. So in our last episode, we chatted about some of the best herbs that you can use to help your kiddos fight off the sickness in those early days of the school year. You know, when the snot is flying around and coughs happen to burst right into your face. Yeah, those days when everybody is sick in those first couple of weeks. That's when we reach for those immune-stimulating herbs we talked about in the last episode. Herbs like garlic, echinacea, and elderberry. These herbs are like a big cup of coffee for your immune system, telling all those powerful cells to wake up and get ready to fight the bad guys. They're really important, and it's also really important that we don't rely on them all of the time. Because if you think about it, it's like drinking a cup of coffee every night at 8 o'clock right before you're going to bed. Not such a good idea, right? It makes it really hard for your body to rest. And well, our bodies really need rest. And our immune system needs a bit of rest too. So what do we do to keep our bodies healthy and strong all year long? We feed it a diet rich in colorful, healthy foods, good fats and oils, and we avoid processed foods and sugars and alcohol and all the bad things. And of course, we give it some exercise, right? Well, in today's episode, I want to talk about those nourishing foods, or in this case, herbs, that are like that healthy diet and regular workouts for your immune system. These are our immunomodulating herbs, herbs that support the immune system all year long and help you be ready to fight the bad guys even if you weren't able to get those handy-dandy immune stimulants on board in time. 
These are the herbs that help fight disease and illness on a regular basis and can even play a major role in preventing cancer for some. Typically, these immunomodulating herbs are taken in a long-term duration, and some may be best taken for a few months, and then you take a break from it and start back up again when you observe that the body needs it. We really dive so much deeper into this in my Herbs for Immune Health program, and also inside of Apothecary Mama, which is opening up for enrollment really soon. I'm super excited about it. Anyway, back to those immune workout herbs, shall we? So one of my favorites and one that I am so fortunate Anira happens to love is ashwagandha. This happens to be one of my favorites personally because it has supported me through some of the toughest times of my life. It did that with its powerful adaptogenic properties. So when I say powerful, I don't want this to be misunderstood. Ashwagandha isn't necessarily an herb that you feel hit you right when you take it. It's an herb that is best used for a long-term duration. In fact, for me, when I used it most during my most stressful times as a mom and a business owner, I would notice it more when I didn't take it. And now we have such a powerful relationship together that I can take a few drops and feel the love and the hug from an old friend. And yes, it's an adaptogenic, meaning that it helps the body to adapt to various stressors throughout life, whether they be emotional, physical, spiritual, you name it. Ashwagandha can be an incredible ally, and it also helps to keep your immune system strong all year long. Because if you think about it, what happens when you're constantly stressed out? You get sick easier, right? And since ashwagandha does both help you ease stress and support the immune system, you're getting all kinds of powerful bonus benefits. Ashwagandha has traditionally been used as a remedy against things like asthma and bronchitis, so it has an affinity for supporting the respiratory system. It's also a great preventative against seasonal allergies, and it's specific for those recovering from chemotherapy or chronic illness. It can help suppress inflammation, and it enhances your immune function by stimulating the white blood cell counts, which... As I talk about white blood cells, takes me down a funny dose of memory lane. So when I was in third grade, maybe in fourth grade, either way, it was back in the 1980s, we had to do one of those autobiographies. And I distinctly remember that in mine, I was going to cure AIDS by making an artificial white blood cell. I drew pictures of what this white blood cell would look like and wrote a whole big thing on how it was going to heal people and cure this dang disease. Little did I know then that I was going to dive so deep into the world of herbal medicine and healing. Anyway, that's kind of a cute story and I I figured I'd bring it up and I was my daughter's age when I thought of those kinds of things. So neat nostalgia for me. And now back to why I chose ashwagandha to talk about in this episode. I also love that my daughter specifically loves ashwagandha because it is so good for those dealing with anxiety and nervousness, which if you've tuned into other episodes, you know that my daughter does deal with anxiety. So not only are we supporting her immune system and keeping it healthy and strong all year long, but her precious nerves get a whole lot of support too. We love this herb so much that we make about a gallon of tincture in the air and use it up with tons of love and gratitude. And according to one of my teachers and author of the book, Adaptogens and Medical Herbalism, and an incredible herbalist nutritionist specializing in the field of oncology, Mr. Donald Yance, ashwagandha is considered to be an excellent tonic that we should incorporate into everyone's daily adaptogenic formula, he writes in one of his books. So how will you incorporate ashwagandha in your life now? feel free to shoot me a message and let me know. I truly want to hear from you. And now on to the next incredible immunomodulating herb that I want to talk to you about that's going to help you navigate the wild world of life and help your kids thrive through the school year is Tulsi or Holy Basil. 
And like ashwagandha, this is an herb I could talk about for many a moons just to cover its array of medicinal properties. Incredible array, that is. And if you like that kind of thing, you definitely should join us inside of Apothecary Mama when we dive way deeper into this stuff. And we even have some live group workshops and Q&A sessions where I'll be there to guide you in making the best choices for herbal remedies to take better care of your family. And yes, holy basil surely comes up a lot in that group of mamas. With many a good reasons, and I'll try to stick to the mostly immunomodulating parts of it right now, but if you've been following me for a while, then you know by now that sometimes I just can't help stop nerding out on herbs and the many, many benefits that you can get from just one amazing plant. Okay, so holy basil and supporting your immune system. So for one thing, this plant is absolutely delicious, like a super tasty cup of tea that you can delight in on a regular basis. And if you don't know already, being able to make your remedies tasty is a key part in their effectiveness, especially for our kiddos. Because, I mean, picky taste buds, am I right? And well, if you don't take the herbs, they don't work. So one of my favorite ways to have Tulsi is in a tea. And I love to add some nettles to it, maybe some hibiscus for a truly nourishing and healthy treat. And holy basil also helps to regulate antibody production, meaning that this plant is so freaking intelligent that it increases antibodies when they're low and also reduces antibodies when they're provoked by an allergic reaction causing an attack on the allergens, which in turn causes you to cough and sneeze and wheeze. Anyways, yes, Tulsi is that smart and really works wonders when it comes to regulating the immune system. Tulsi also enhances overall immune function. It's got both antiviral and antibacterial properties. It's also a diaphoretic herb, which means that it's going to help release heat and support the body during times of fever. And if the sickness does set in and maybe a tummy ache or nausea comes along with it, you guessed it, Tulsi can be a super duper helper there. And gosh, oh golly, there I go again, talking way too much about a nerve when I'm supposed to go into all the immunomodulating properties. This is so hard, (laughs) y'all. Anyway, I also love Tulsi because it supports the nerves and it's great for memory enhancement and really helpful for those dealing with ADHD. Oh yes, and it is an excellent immunomodulator. So in short, Tulsi, 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 holy, holy, holy basil. Get some. (laughs) Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty practical stuff. The stuff that you can cook with. The stuff that is super easy to find in your local grocery store. And the stuff that is food, that is medicine, and that acts as a great immunomodulator. What could it be? What could it be? It be shiitake. Yes, those little mushrooms that are in the grocery store and that are super easy to grow on a log at your home. That are delicious in stir fries and soups and stews too. These tasty little morsels are also phenomenal when it comes to restoring and modulating the immune system. Shiitakes have been shown to be effective at preventing many viruses, bacteria, parasites, and even cancer. In fact, it's been shown to have some powerful anti-tumor activities, and it stimulates the natural killer cells that inhibit tumor growth. It's a great ally for those that are immunocompromised, and it has been shown to be very effective at fighting off an array of antibiotic-resistant strains of bacteria that can invade our bodies. It's super powerful, and another one of those foods as medicine that I could talk about for days. And there are so many tasty ways to incorporate it into your life. I mean, I love food. And when I can make it my medicine, it's the best ever. I share a bunch of my favorite recipes inside of Apothecary Mama to help you incorporate these herbs into your daily life. Because that's 
how herbs work best when you actually use them and use them consistently as a part of your daily lifestyle. They can make a dramatic difference in your health, in your family's health, and most importantly, the health of our entire planet. And speaking of our planet and sustainability and all that goodness, you can grow your own shiitake mushrooms and save your family some money as you're improving their health. Winning! So I like to get a mushroom grow kit from CascadiaMushrooms.com. I'll link to them in the show notes for you, but there's quite a few people that make these grow kits. So definitely start growing your fun guys. Okay, so that's it. If you found this episode helpful, where we talk about those immunomodulating herbs, ashwagandha, holy basil, and shiitakes, and you found it, Helpful? You're ready to start giving your family's immune system a more regular and consistent workout with these herbs? Please leave me a review on your favorite podcast listening channel and share this info with your friends and family. This is how you and I can come together to make this world a better place. This is how we make herbalism spread like wildflowers. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Mel Rambling About Herbs. On another note, I must mention that while I know you're getting some good info here, it's important to remember that this podcast is purely for entertainment and educational purposes and is not intended to be a substitute for medical treatment. While the information in this podcast is absolutely relevant, herbs work differently for each person and each condition. That's why I recommend you work with a qualified practitioner, whether that be another herbalist, a naturopath, or your doctor. So thank you again. I am truly honored that you're tuning into these episodes and on the path with me to make sure that there's an herbalist in every home again. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends so that we can make herbalism. Hashtag spread like wildflowers. It has been so much fun and so, I don't know, joyous watching all of my medicinal plant friends popping up in my garden from the elecampane to the comfrey and the arnica. I love seeing these friends pop up. And if you are still trying to decide what to grow in your medicinal herb garden, you've got to grab my guide. It's all about the most essential herbs that every mom should know and should grow. So I teach you how to grow them and the many different ways that you can use them. If you want to grab the guide, go ahead. It's free and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a lot of delight and use out of it. And there's a link to it in the show notes. I'm wishing you tons of happy medicine planting.